Okay, today we're gonna dive into some of Seattle's luxury neighborhoods. Now these are kind of the big name, premier neighborhoods where you might have heard of famous people living or they've got old money or they've just seemed to be the places that have had the most appreciation and desirability over the last several decades. My name is Emily Cressy. I'm a local real estate agent in this area and I grew up here in Seattle. I've lived here all my life except when I went to college and started investing in houses in North Carolina. So I'm back and I love this area. We're just going to dive right in. So the first neighborhood that I want to focus on is Windermere. Windermere is an exclusive like homeowner association protected neighborhood in the North Seattle area on the shores of Lake Washington. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can get an idea of where it is on the map. So we're on Lake Washington. Some of the homes have lakefront access. I just was looking at a one and a half acre home site here that did have lakefront access that had sold for 15 million dollars a couple years ago uh, famous people like gary larson the far side cartoonist um, the former mayor of seattle and bill gates parents uh, are some of the the folks that are better known for being here in the windermere area now this i think is an anomaly that sh that should not be in that location um, so just try to focus in here. So next to it, we have uh, Sandpoint. There's a big park out here, Magnuson Park, with a wonderful off-leash dog area. The puppers can run around in the field. They can go swim in Lake Washington. There are indoor and outdoor soccer fields, kite flying, public swimming. So this is a great amenity here, as well as the Burke Gilman Trail, which is a very flat level paved running, walking, and biking trail that a lot of people in the area enjoy going out and either exercising on or commuting on. It actually goes right into the University of Washington area over here. So uh, my grandparents actually built their house in Windermere when it was just being established uh, in the post-war era. So he worked at the University of Washington as a law school professor and eventually she started working there too. She had her master's in um, speech and was a speech pathologist. So they both enjoyed working at the University of Washington. This is also an area that's highly accessible for the children's hospital. So we may have uh, doctors and surgeons and that type of thing uh, living here as well. Uh, likewise, Laurelhurst is a prestigious similar area and you can actually rent boats here uh, at the University of Washington right by the football stadium. You can rent a little canoe or a kayak and come out and see all of the waterfront homes here along Laurelhurst. I think it's too much of a schlep. I, I don't know. I'm not that strong of a rower to come out here and take a look at Windermere, but I know they've got a little park down here with a diving board and a dock. So even if you if you live here but you don't have a lake front home, you can still come down and enjoy swimming in the water. So you zoom out a little bit, you'll be able to see that we are uh, really close here to the 520 floating bridge. This is a toll bridge that goes across Lake Washington into Bellevue if you need access to the east side, or if you would just come down I-5 here straight into Seattle, uh, it's not long once you get on the highway. It's just a matter of how many little windy back roads you have to take in order to get here. So you can map quest that, but I would expect, you know, from where I live up here, 35, 40 minutes uh, during the morning commute. So here probably more like 20 to 25. So here's a little bit of the map of what it looks like uh, in the Windermere neighborhood. There are several different street entrances it tends to be very quiet, quiet, except uh, during the summer of love a couple years ago when Antifa came and was walking through the streets to the mayor's house, making lots of noise in the middle of the night, uh, protesting some of her policies that they didn't like. So uh, that's kind of just an interesting color comment. Let's look at what we have here in Windermere as far as the types of homes for sale and the prices of homes for sale. So here's an older house uh, on a split level lot for $2 million, a uh, quarter of an acre. Here's another, you know, modest home, 3,700 square feet for 2 million. And a lot of Windermere is just about being in the neighborhood. I've seen homes in this neighborhood for rent, like furnished rentals while the owners were in Hawaii or out of state for about $10,000 per month. 
Uh, here's another one for two million, five bedroom, 2,800 square feet. And these are just sales within the last couple years. Oh my goodness, this is my grandparents' house, guys. Oh, this has been totally remodeled from how it was when they lived there. But that is their house. And uh, now it's worth $2.4 I think when she moved out uh, oh, maybe 20 years ago, she sold it for $1 million. So that's been very nicely remodeled. And there is a homeowners association here. So, yep, there's a homeowners association. And that's a, only about $60 a month. And you do get access to the Lakefront Club, like I was mentioning before. Now, this is not a gated community. It's just a... Uh, it's there to um, kind of they have some lamp posts that are all alike they have some big columns they decorate a Christmas tree and um, I'll show you some footage of driving through here it's a lovely area uh, as well now next to oh, I'll show you a couple other properties so as we go up the price scale we're gonna get into some newer construction some like this is very modern so what they often would do is take down the older homes like the one i showed you that was my grandparents home and either drastically remodel it or even rebuild it so here's a huge one that's 6,500 square feet that sold for almost six million and then uh, the next there's one here with a pool that sold for six million so that looks very nice these folks stayed here for about 15 years you can get an idea for this one and then the top most one uh, has water access this one does too so you may be able to get some waterfront access you can see that the lots are fairly narrow and there is a slope they've got this windy trail indicating switchbacks this one has a kind of a boardwalk we do have to be aware of erosion issues when we're going down these sleep, steep slopes to the waterfront. This one, again, you know, Lake Washington water frontage, $8 million. And this one here, uh, $14 million. And so you can see how nice that is to have that water view and actually be on the water. That's probably the 520 bridge that we're looking at over there. But that one is a little bit dated, oh, that turquoise tile. <laughs> Um, so this looks like kind of a, a steep downhill down to the water and your dock there. The next luxury community in Seattle that I'm going to highlight is Laurelhurst, adjacent to Windermere, which we just looked at, and with many of the same features and the same vibe. Uh, it does have some nice homes, again, built at a similar time frame post-war. Uh, here's a beautiful Tudor home. We have a lot of these in Seattle with the really strongly peaked roofs tending to be brick um, and often appearing on hillsides. Uh, great views from a lot of these and many of them are updated. Some are more modest still, you know, but 3,000 square feet, $2 million. It doesn't look fancy, but because it is where it is here in Laurelhurst, you really can pay a premium for the location. Here's another Tudor. You see the steep roof lines and this one has some of that artistic uh, framing as well curved uh, this might even be a coved roof line here with a little bit of a curve in the roof in the old days they built walls with uh, plaster and lathe rather than with drywall boards so they had a little bit more of a paper mache effect and didn't necessarily do the hard corners all over the place I'm getting some variety you can see in the back of this photo uh, we've got some water view over here, which is nice, and it looks like a fairly steeply sloping lot. You can see that the, the garage is on a different level than the yard. And this is not unusual. Uh, a lot of people who are not from Seattle are surprised by all of the hills we have. Uh, this is a very sloping area. Look at the front yard of this house. You know, the, the yard just goes boom, drops right down, stairs all the way. And so you're perched well above street level. And the nice thing about that is that you oftentimes will get some, some nice views out the windows. Uh, if you don't have a view of the water and you don't have a view of the mountains, we say that you have a territorial view, which means you could just see the region around you. 
<laughs> you're up on the hill looking around another tutor here you're not looking into your neighbor's window and looking at uh, you know what they're making for dinner here's another modern uh, more when they have all this cubic structure that tends to be a more modern space saving and in, in all over seattle we do have a lot of these because uh space land ground space is at a premium so we have to get as much house as we can into a small a lot as we can we've got neighbors on either sides we don't want to take up the entire front and backyard we may be willing or working with a slope so we tend to just use that whole footprint and build it all the way up uh, we get a lot of townhouses that are three and four stories tall and in some of these neighborhoods where people are paying a premium to be there they're already paying a million dollars for the location they want to have a two or three million dollar house so that means more space and that means going up and taking advantage of that vertical space some of these places also have a height limitation you can't go too far up and block your neighbor's view uh, we can't have a skyscraper in the middle of a residential area so we have to get as much as we can under the height limit as well a little bit bigger lot here 9,000 square foot lot a little bit of a water view in the back with this one it looks like so you can kind of just get an idea of what Laurelhurst is like now we're getting up onto the water this one is 12 million dollars take a look at this you're kind of walking the gangplank here to get in the front door you, this must be on a slope here from the parking area to the uh, the main living quarters and they re they've removed the additional photos here for privacy but this is the top end of the uh, Laurelhurst price range as far as what's listed as sold in the MLS in the last couple of years and this one does come with over an acre so again going for those really prestigious waterfront properties you're going to get a significantly different price point and um, an amazing lot and location okay, next I'm going to highlight Broadmoor this is actually a private gated community just south of Laurelhurst we looked at Windermere we looked at Laurelhurst here's the University of Washington and now we're just popping down onto the other side of the ship canal looking at Broadmoor a gated community here nestled between the Arboretum which is an enormous park and uh, the, the Broadmoor Golf Course right here. So this whole area, Madison Park, very nice. You know, we're getting waterfront and water view property all through here. Madrona, also very nice. Capitol Hill has some amazing older homes, uh, but this one is a gated community, uh, Broadmoor, and it actually does have a fee to buy in. So what that means is that when you purchase a home here, you're paying about one half of 1%, more like, 41% of 1% uh, to get into the property. So on a two and a half million dollar property, that's gonna look like something like $10,000. And that's a fee that you're paying to the homeowners association to let you in the door along with applying and having a background check as well. Uh, in addition to that, they do have monthly fees on their HOA and those are gonna be about $165 per month. Uh, maybe more if you end up getting the golf club membership as well. So a lot of these homes, one of the nice things about the homes is uh, the golf course being nearby. So if you're getting something that's on the golf course on the fairway, uh, you're going to be paying a premium for that. And the golf course is pretty strict with the rules. No jeans, no tank tops, no you know frayed clothing and that type of thing they're trying to keep the standard high and that club is uh, only available to people who are um, invited in so it's not a public course so we can take a look at this beautiful home in Broadmoor it has red Spanish tile a uh, nicely landscaped yard I chose this one because they have some great drone footage which is just going to give you an idea of what's around the area so you can see here in Broadmoor nice homes gated community tends to be smaller lot sizes we're packing them in pretty tightly so we're seeing a lot of bigger homes on smaller lots and up to um, the view across the ship canal bridge there's 520 uh, toward the University of Washington and Laurelhurst to the north and again not necessarily the most new homes not necessarily the biggest homes this is a five million dollar home four bedrooms three baths wonderful landscaping uh, looks like they've had some professional interior design work done nice hardwood floors uh, nice marble built-ins 
beautiful windows, maybe some lower ceiling heights in here. So, uh, you know, an interesting combination of high price point and lovely home, but, uh, you know, it says it was built in 1927. So it's been updated and remodeled, but it does have some limitations of age. What I find in Seattle is that a lot of the nicest locations have already been built. It's hard to find that beautiful, pristine, untouched area close to the city. As you can see, we just have so much water all around us uh, that getting land, getting water view, everything has already been taken. Even the land itself, we're kind of squeezed in to a pretty narrow uh, beltway that goes through Seattle. So there is just not a lot that we can do to expand in all directions. We're pressured to expand north and south. And then we popped over onto the other side of Lake Washington and expanded east toward Bellevue. Bellevue has actually gotten very popular lately. Microsoft built its headquarters there in Redmond a couple decades back. And now as Seattle has struggles a little bit more with crime and homelessness and safety issues, uh, Bellevue by contrast is keeping on top of those things, is not seeing the same level of problems that Seattle is and looks uh, extremely good by comparison. So typically what I'm finding is that we're paying a 20 to 30% premium to be on Bellevue uh, where it's safer and cleaner and has better schools. So let's take a look at what that looks like when it comes to luxury housing options. So what we're screening for now is homes that have sold at $5 million and above in the last year. And you can clearly see that while there are some in the luxury neighborhoods that we talk about here, Medina, I'm sorry, uh, Windermere, Laurelhurst, and uh, Broadmoor. There are a couple others over here in Queen Anne, uh, beautiful historic Victorians, a wonderful area, and Magnolia sold some nice uh, million and a half dollar family homes here, older property, uh, great proximity to Seattle and the South Lake Union area, right by where it's the A in Capitol Hill here, where my mouse is. This is South Lake Union. This is where a lot of the, the Google offices, the Amazon offices are. So this is certainly a nice um, stretch for accessing those and still feeling like you're in a, a prestigious neighborhood. Uh, down here to the south, you're getting more into the high rise uh, condominium lifestyle. I have a million dollar listing coming up here. That's a, a view condo in, um, in downtown Seattle itself. But again, screening for five million dollars and above, we certainly see a lot more density and opportunities for luxury homes here in the Bellevue side, especially concentrated on this little knob between 520 and I-90 where downtown Bellevue is. And this is what we call Medina uh, Clyde Hill. So Medina is right here. There's a golf course. This is where Bill Gates' home is, uh, his $40 million mansion. Uh, and then we have Clyde Hill, which is a hill. And what I see when I drive in this area is a lot of new construction and infill property. They're knocking down the $2 million home and building a $5 million home in its place. We do have uh, water views from this area, although obviously not waterfront. And then here we have Yarrow Point, Hunts Point, uh, getting into, again, water view, waterfront property. So let's take a look at this one just for fun. $20 million. Let's take a look at what that buys you. You can see what it's like on the point, uh, very narrow and uh, lots of waterfront, right? Everybody has a dock. Everybody has a mansion. Look how built up this lot is here. Just every square foot taken. And um, you are pretty close to the 520 floating bridge, so you will get some freeway noise here. But it's certainly a prestigious area to be in. Uh, oh, are they sharing some other photos with us? Let's take a look. So you've got Lake Washington. You've got your pool. You've got your pond. You've got your tables and your fire circle looking out. Uh, beautiful, nice architecture with lots of windows taking care to look out. It's hard these days actually to build with as many windows as you'd like. Seattle has some uh, energy, you know, it needs to be energy efficient. You can't let too much heat out the windows. So they sometimes will limit how much uh, glass you can put into your building. Uh, beautiful fireplace, beautiful home, but we are certainly paying a premium for the location here. Oh, guys. I hate the tile countertops that so much crud gets into that grout. I don't like it. 
Um, this actually reads to me as a, a quite a bit older home, almost a 1960s style home. Uh, oftentimes when people, once you get into this house, you don't move, there's nowhere to leave or go to. So, oh, look at that sunset. That's actually probably sunrise looking out. No, we're in Bellevue. So we're looking west towards Seattle. So that is sunset over there. But yeah, once you get in here, you don't leave. So a lot of times you'll see people who have been living in these homes for 40 years. So it's not unusual to see something that's dated, but it comes on the market and um, you know that's what you get. You can, if you can buy it for 20 million, then you can remodel it to be how you want after that. Okay, if you can't choose that one on the water, I understand we can go up here onto Clyde Hill and you can see uh, sort of one of these more modern options. So this looks like new construction to me, kind of the cube style where we're getting in all the square footage that we can. Closer to the top of the hill is better as far as your view goes. And uh, you're certainly gonna be in an A plus neighborhood, uh, lots of expensive homes all over the place. It's just a matter of knocking down the ugly $2 million homes, like I said before. Uh, great schools in this area as well, although a lot of people do go to private school. Here's a nice home in Medina. As you drive through the waterfront of Medina, it's hard to actually see the homes. A lot of them are screened behind hedges and fences, so it, it is a fairly private area. But once you get in, you can see how nice some of the homes are. And yes, the teardown in that area is going to go for $2 million. So we're just kind of looking around at where some of these primo areas are, right? And so a lot here on the knob, uh, bridal trails. This park has been uh, an equestrian enabled park. There are actually still some horse, you know, horseback riding places, lessons, stables with horses that are adjacent. There's some that are inside of the park. And so historically people who have, you know, wanted to take their horse out for a morning jog in the park or whatever would live in this area. There aren't um, very many left, I don't think but that would be the place to go if you had the money to ride a horse uh, in Bellevue. Now uh, here, Kirkland, Kirkland's waterfront has just been going gangbusters. They're growing like crazy, lots of new construction, lots of beautiful uh, homes, townhomes, condos, and certainly uh, if you can get close enough to see the water or beyond the water, uh, you're gonna be doing great. Uh, I love this kind of Italian Mediterranean feeling home. Uh, nice archways, nice accents, beautiful kitchen. And let's see, that looks like a water view out this window here. And mostly in Kirkland, you're not gonna have the protection of a homeowners association. So you're just gonna be kind of out there and hoping that you have other houses that are kind of uh, protecting you around you. Lake Sammamish, this is much smaller than Lake Washington. A lot of people like this for swimming and kind of vacation home type stuff. Here's an $11 million property on Lake Sammamish. So you can see how nice that would be to have your boat on the dock, your, uh, your hot tub. You're a little bit farther away from the city, so this is not as good from a commute perspective. And then last, I do wanna point out Mercer Island. This island in the middle of Lake Washington between Seattle and Bellevue is consistently fabulous all over the place. They have wonderful schools. Uh, the people that go to the schools are, get great grades. They're great at athletics. They just have a wonderful reputation, uh, you know, squeaky, cr squeaky clean type of place and um, consistently high property values throughout. So if we wanna look at some homes here, let's take a look at something inland. Again, you know, remember we are screening for $5 million and up. So these are gonna be the nicest of the properties, but you can probably, uh, in most of these areas we're talking about, find things that are two and a half million and up. And uh, you can just get an idea of how nice the property could be. This is not a waterfront property. So uh, they've done a great job at 7,000 square feet. It's almost a full acre. You're paying seven million for that. Uh, and then if you go out to the water, we're paying eight million. And let's see what that house looks like. You've got your own dock, kayak, beautiful windows, beautiful home, close to your neighbors. You have a good idea of what it's like, the homes down on the water and the homes up here with the water view. Sometimes they will have water access like a, 
a publicly owned boat launch somewhere that people in the neighborhood can get to uh, even if they don't have a waterfront yard. So these are some of my favorite luxury neighborhoods in Seattle. If you're looking for a wonderful home that fits the definition of luxury, which in my mind in this area at the current time in the market is about 2 million and up, you can really unlock some amazing properties, whether or not they're on the water, have water views, or just are spectacular homes where you can feel comfortable stretching out, entertaining, having friends and family with you uh, just in a, a classy space. There's a lot to be said for the Seattle market. And also keep in mind the Bellevue market, which does tend to be a little bit more expensive, but has some really nice homes to take a look at. If you have further questions, I hope you keep watching. We have another video coming up for you on this channel. In the meantime, feel free to reach out. My website is homeproassociates.com and I will look for you there. Thanks again, it's Emily Cressy and I'll see you on the next one.